Hello viewers and welcome to another video of Code with Winner. In this video, we'll write a Java program to check if a sentence entered by the user is a snowball string or not. Let us first understand what is a snowball string. A snowball string is a sentence where each word is arranged in ascending order of the lens and is also consecutive. So for example, if the string is I am the Lord, Notice that the length of the first word that is I is 1, the second word is am and the length is 2, the third word is the and the length is 3 and so on. So what is important over here is that the length of the second word is greater than the length of the first word, length of the third word is greater than the length of the second word and similarly length of the fourth word is greater than the third word. So the length of each word is more than the previous word and if that is not the case, it's not a snowball string. The objective is to write a program in Java to enter any sentence and check if it is a snowball string or not. The word in the sentence may be separated by one or more spaces and terminated by a dot or question mark only. So the thing is that there may be one or more spaces in between the words and the last character must be dot or question mark only. The program should generate appropriate error message for any other terminating character. So now let us move on to the actual coding. I have already written a small skeleton so that we can save at least some time. So let's begin. So the first thing is we have to get the input from the user and for that we'll create a scanner object. So scanner in is equal to new scanner System dot in. So this will allow us to read the user input. And then it's always a good practice to close the scanner object towards the end so as to release any memory which is occupied by the object and prevent memory leaks. So that is also done. Now the next thing is we have to prompt the user to enter a sentence. So we'll say system.out.println and we'll do exactly what the question is saying. And the question is saying that we have to say input colon and that is, is to be followed by the actual input. So we'll go over here and I'll remove this ln because as you can see the question is asking for the input next to the caption. So we'll go inside the inverted code. We'll say input colon. We'll give a tab and that will act as our prompt. Once that is done, we'll obtain the input and store it in a variable called input and I'll say is equal to in dot next line and you might have noticed sometimes users by mistake enter a space at the end because everyone is used to typing a space after each word so what we can do is we can say dot trim to remove the leading and trailing spaces if there are any though this is not an essential part from the perspective of the question but it's always a good idea Okay, so once we have taken the input, then we have to check whether it is a valid string or not. Valid string means that it must terminate with either a dot or a question mark. So we'll check, we'll say if not input dot ends with, we'll check for the dot first. So if it is not ending with a dot or if it is not ending with a question mark so input dot ends with and this time we'll say question mark if it is not ending with one of these two we'll display an appropriate message and the message is there in example number four so I'll copy this entire line and I'll paste it obviously within the double quotes and I'll also remove these multiple spaces and replace it with a single tap character. So this takes care of the terminating character check. Now if it, this is not the case, we'll proceed. And in case you want to avoid this else, what we can do is we can straight away say return over here and avoid that extra else and the indentation which comes with it. Okay. So this is done. Now what we have to do is for the checking part, we must first remove this 
last character, the terminating character. And for that, I'll say that, okay, input should be equal to input dot substring. I want to take out the part of the string except the last character. So I'll say that, okay, start from the zeroth character and take everything till last but one character. So input dot length minus one. So this will take out everything from the first character and it will exclude the last character. Once this is done, now what we'll do is we'll make a function and we'll check whether it is a snowball string or not. If it is, we'll display a message. If it is not, we'll display another message. So let's say the name of our function is is snowball string and we'll pass our input. If it returns true, we'll say system.out.println. It is a snowball string. So I'll just copy this. And over here, I'll paste the string again. I'll remove these multiple spaces by a single tap character. Then I'll again copy this whole line. We'll go to the else part. I'll again paste the message and I'll say it is not a snowball string. It is not a snowball string. And then I'll press Control Shift I to reformat the code. Okay, so this is done. And now we come to our main part that is we have to define a method by the name of is snowball string. So let's do it. So we'll go down. And we'll say public static. And there is no need to make it public because this will be called from within this class itself. So we'll say private static boolean. Name of the method was is snowball string, which will accept a sentence. And then we are inside the method. And if everything goes on smoothly, we'll say return true. If it is not a snowball string, we'll return false. Also notice that this return is underlined, meaning that there is an issue. And the issue is that if I am returning from here, this in.close will not be called. So what I'll do is I'll copy this from here. And before returning, we'll paste it over here. And see, the warning is gone. Now, before we can check whether or not each word is more than the previous word, when I say more, I mean the length of each word is more than the length of the previous word. I need to split the sentence into individual words. And for that, what we'll do is we'll use the split method of the string class. So I'll say string words. I'll declare it as an array. And then I'll say sentence dot split and then I have to tell the computer uh, on what character I should split on. So I'll say that I'll split it on the space and once that is done just for the sake of understanding we'll print the array. To print the array I'll say system dot out dot print ln and then we'll see say arrays dot two string a r r a y s arrays dot string and thereafter we'll display the whole thing. Now in order to test it I'll just copy one of the inputs let's say he gives bonus I'll copy the whole sentence and then we'll run this code so we'll go over here we'll run our code we'll be prompted to enter a string I'll paste the string, we'll press enter, and as you can see, the individual words are out. First he, then may, then give, and then bonus. Now notice, the question says that the words in the sentence may be separated by one or more spaces. And right now our program is only going to separate on a space. If we enter multiple spaces, let me do it for you, if I run it again. And this time I'll enter multiple spaces. So I'll say again the same input. 
he may space 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 give space a space 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 and then I'll say bonus full stop if I press enter notice there are empty locations in between and that is happening because there are multiple spaces in between so in order to resolve this issue what we can do is where we are splitting instead of giving a single space we can give a regular expression stating that we want one or more spaces so for that what we'll do is we'll represent instead of saying space like this we'll say slash slash i am giving two slashes because if i give a single slash it will mean an escape code and i'm saying slash slash s and then one or more spaces so i'll say plus if you have to check for zero or more spaces you give an asterisk but here we'll say just a single plus and now if i run this program again and i give an input with multiple spaces in between like he space 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 may give space 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 uh, and after a lot of spaces i say bonus dot and now you can see that the extra spaces are gone and we are getting our input parsed properly i have already made a detailed video on word extraction earlier and you may want to go through the same if you want more details regarding the split method i'll share the link to that video in the description below and before we proceed further i would like to correct this prompt the spelling of input is wrong i'll just remove that extra n okay so let us proceed with the main logic i'll remove this line which was there just for understanding and now what we'll do is we have to check whether each word is more than the previous word or rather the length of each word is more than the length of the previous word and if that is not the case we'll return false so let's run a loop we'll say i is equal to zero i is less than word dot length please note words is an array so no parenthesis and we'll say minus one followed by i plus plus so since we are going to compare each word with the next word or rather again the length of each word with the length of next word we are not going to take the loop till the last element of the array because otherwise you cannot compare the last element with the last plus oneth element because obviously the last plus oneth element doesn't exist so we'll go inside and we'll do the test we'll say if word of i dot length that is if the ith word is more than again the small type over here words dot length we'll go over here and we'll say words of i plus one dot length if this is the case we'll return false and we say return false so this loop iterates over the array of words stopping one word before the last word since it checks each word with the next the if statement checks if the length of the correct word is greater than the length of the next word if it is it means that the current word is longer than the next one which violates the snowball string condition and in this case we immediately return false if the loop completes without finding any violation of the snowball string condition that is no word is longer than the next the function will return true indicating that the sentence is a snowball string let us now run this program and see if it is working or not so we'll go up we'll copy the first string and if the program is working the output should be it is a snowball string so we'll run it i'll paste the input and it is a snowball string let's check the next one also again i'll copy this string we'll again run the program i'll again paste the input and it is saying incorrect terminating character invalid input 
So there seems to be a bug in the portion where we are checking for the terminating character. Let's inspect the code. And uh, yes, there is a bug. And the bug is that we have to convert this or into an and and there has to be one more not. So let's read it once again. If it is not ending with a dot and it is not ending with a question mark, then it's an error. Let's run this program once more and see if it's working now or not. So I'll again copy the input, run the program, paste, enter, and it is a snowball string. Let's move on to the next one. Again, copy the input, run the program, paste the string, enter. It is not a snowball string. And just for the sake of completeness, the last input as well. We'll again run the program. We'll again paste an incorrect terminating character invalid input. So our program is now working properly. It is crucial to test your program with all the provided test data as well as some random data to ensure that the bugs are minimized. We have now reached the end of this video on testing for a snowball string. I'll see you soon in another video. Until then, happy coding. Your feedback is valuable to me. I want to make sure that my videos are clear and helpful. You can follow me on the internet on any one or all of these channels.